Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Begakar Ahmed and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be going ahead and taking a look at a Donald Trump speech that he went ahead and gave. It is a three minute video of him going ahead and talking about bringing the Bible back to the United States of America and talking about basically how we lack Christian values within our society. We lack morals from the Bible, which the United States was actually founded off of. The United States is founded off of Christian values. Um, Judeo-Christian values. It is founded off of the commandments of God, and we have a constitution, we have amendments that are formated and constructed off of the basis and the blueprint and the foundation of the Holy Bible, of uh, God Almighty, of you know God's prophets. So I find it very, very interesting that many presidents before Donald Trump aren't very, very, very focused on this. But it seems to me that, honestly, from my perspective, when it comes down to the presidency, I can I can care less. Um, Donald Trump or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, the same thing's going to happen. I don't believe that the country is ran by our president. I believe our country is ran by corporations that, like Apple, corporations like the oil companies, corporations like the electric companies, the waste management companies, corporations like NVIDIA, whose stock is tripling, corporations like Apple who have a $3 trillion stock. I feel like these are the people who back Donald Trump with billions of dollars or back Joe Biden with billions of dollars and only give us two options, really, more or less as American citizens. They give us this illusion that we have the we have the freedom to vote and we have the freedom to make a choice, but they only give us two choices. Why? Because they back them with billions of dollars and they go, oh, well, you could either choose this person that we spent 300, 400 billion dollars marketing to you for the last two years, or you can choose this person with the blue that we marketed with billions of dollars for the last three years. So all it is is a bunch of donors coming from big corporations backing a candidate that they see that they can use and abuse like a little puppet and will listen to them. And then the American people have to choose what puppet is better in the office. So at this point in time, I'm not going to sit here and fall for these little games. I do understand that the country is not ran by the president. The country is ran by corporations, uh, first and foremost. And these corporations pay out things and do things to make sure that everything is in their control. Everything is working in their way, especially the banks, especially big corporations like big oil, um, you know, big mining companies. Uh, people like this in, in general. So without further ado, let's go ahead and figure out what Donald J. Trump, um, our next president, has to say about the Bible and bringing the Bible back to the United States of America. To be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood, who doesn't love his... I'm not sure why I opened the, uh, the elections. One second. ...song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard to keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this. God bless the USA Bible. And it's just very important and very important to me. I want to have a lot of people have it. You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. Many of you have never read them and don't know the liberties and rights you have. The way he talks is compelling. It's funny, though, because um, you can just see it. You can see the pattern. He's like, you have to have it. This God-given Bible, you have to have it. It's good for your heart. It's good for your soul. Like, these amazing people, they're such amazing people. The most amazing people. They don't get more amazing than these people. Like, that's how Donald Trump talks. Like, he'll use the same adjective, like, eight times to describe something. To make it sound really, really, he's like, oh, it's really good. It's really, really great. Like, it can't get greater than this. Like, you know what I mean? It's just funny to me. You have as Americans and how you are being threatened to lose those rights. It's happening all the time. It's a very sad thing that's going on in our country, but we're going to get it turned around. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. And I truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the Biggest problems we have, that's why our country is going haywire. We've lost religion in our country. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. This so this is a problem, right? He's like, we need to bring back religion, something that lacks within our society. That's why America's falling apart. He's 100% right. Anything that's godless is going to fall apart. 
If you go make money and you're doing it and it's dirty money, it's going to fall apart. If you go and try to get married and you do it without God, you guys do not make a bond with God in your marriage. It's useless. Like what's marriage without God? God created marriage. Without God, there is no such thing as marriage. Marriage is not something that was created by the state. Marriage is a religious thing. Marriage is a bond that a woman and a man make together before they commit you know, any type of sexual act or become legalized on each other, right? Where back in the day, you didn't need to get married. You could have just had sex with any woman, had a kid with her, and done what you want, right? So what created marriage was religion. There's a lot of things and fundamentals that happen within this country that protect women, that protect men, that protect your children. And it's sad because we're losing a lot of these fundamentals that are Christian-based, that are based off of Judeo-Christian values that came from the prophets of God, that came from God Almighty. So what he's saying here is 100% absolutely correct. Do I think that it's like a little marketing scheme for Donald Trump? Like, does he actually really care? Probably not. He probably doesn't care too much. Yes, he would probably like to see uh, Christian values come back into people, even if, you know, he's not the most religious person in the world. It's probably better for someone to dress modestly and act right and not cuss each other out and not steal and give to charity and be kind to their parents and believe in God, you know, because we'll have a better society at that point. But um, I don't think, like, overall, he really cares. I think he's just doing this to win over the American people because I think he really does see how hard people are jumping into religion. And that's why I made this channel because I can see how many people are running to religion because they're scared. The world is getting very, very dark. It's getting very dangerous. Um, people don't know what to expect. They're getting anxiety. They're getting stress. Many people are suicidal. Uh, the divorce rates are through the roof things are just not working out very, very well here on planet Earth at the moment. There's wars ra ravaging through the lands and people are turning to God Almighty because that's all that's left when you feel there's nothing. When you feel alone, you feel the world's collapsing upon you, you realize there's a creator and I need to find him. So you see millions, if not billions of people, like a wave coming to Islam, coming back to Christianity, opening their scriptures, reading, praying, trying to become better people for their self because they're scared of the future that we're setting up for our children. We're scared of the future that we're setting up for ourselves. So a lot of people are running towards religion and Donald Trump is using this as a leverage here, which is very smart of him to use this as a leverage because I haven't seen any president in the last, my lifetime, uh, pretty much get up on stage and start talking about the Bible and it being implemented and Christianity coming back to America because America is built off of Christianity and we're losing America and America is not great anymore and America is collapsing because of the lack of Judeo-Christian values that we need to bring back and instill within our within our culture, within our society. Um, this is exactly what he's saying and he's 100% right. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. Religion is so important, it's so missing, but it's gonna come back and it's gonna come back strong just like our country is gonna come back strong. And like he's saying as well, he's using the word religion a lot. Yes, he said Christianity. Yes, he's holding a Bible. Yes, it's a presidential Bible. It has the com uh, commandments, amendments inside of it. But he's saying religion. So he's not singling out any of the other religions or like Jews or Muslims or Hindus or whatever the case may be. He's saying that if these people need to come back to religion, right? Um, it seems like he's singling out Christianity because it seems like Christianity is what has kind of lost its way. Not the Muslims, not the Jews, not the Hindus, but the Christians. As the United States is 80% represented by Christian, Caucasian, male and females. So these European Christians, the 80% that make up the United States of America, I think he's trying to instill their values back into them. Not necessarily the Muslims or the Jews or whatever, but he is using the word religion. So that is also very, very, very nice of him that he's using the word religion and not just necessarily singling out Christians. Um, so he doesn't make Christians feel like they're being, you know, talked down to or to make Muslims and Jews and Hindus and whoever feel left out at the end of the day. In the end, we do not answer to bureaucrats in Washington. We answer to God in heaven. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God, and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. 
We must defend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be, again, a great nation. Our Founding Fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Pray, get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and the legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back, and to make America great again. I'm proud to partner with Lee in this offering. He's a very special man, both as a talent, but maybe even more so as a human being. He's very, very special. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you, and God bless the USA. All right, awesome. Uh, don't mind the speech. This is a good speech by Donald J. Trump here. And this is going to be our next president. Um, he will be sworn in in January of 2025. I do not expect anything really to change from uh, Biden's presidency, Donald Trump's presidency. Yes, they will put on a little puppet show in the media to make it seem like they're doing a bunch. But the same thing is going to keep happening. Um, the wars will continue, most likely. Our dollar will continue to inflate at such a rate that you would you, you your brain is not going to be able to comprehend it. People are going to lose their houses. People are going to lose their jobs. People are going to lose everything. And I'm telling you, this is inevitable. doesn't matter who is the president. This is inevitable. Our country is $55 trillion in debt. I have been studying finance for the last six to seven years of my life. I've been watching the charts. I've been watching gold and oil and silver and the U.S. dollar and the British pound and and every other currency on this planet, and I've been watching cryptocurrency, so, such as Bitcoin and Dogecoin and all of these things, and I watch how the money moves, and I watch the U.S. dollar's inflation, and I watch the Fed meetings, and I attend them, and I listen to what they say about inflation and interest rates and all of these different things and taxes and blah, 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 blah. This is going to get extremely bad. Donald Trump is going to take all of the blame for it. And it's going to cause an even bigger division in this country, most likely. Um, I still don't have the greatest outlook. Um, the way Donald Trump speaks is very promising. Um, but, I mean, a lot of the damage has already been done, and there's no going back on it. Um, a lot of damage of honor earth that has been done, a lot of the damage economically and financially um, that has already been done, there's no turning back from it. That's why you see cryptocurrencies and stocks flying. It's because people are leaving the U.S. dollar. They don't want the U.S. dollar anymore. Um, the U.S. dollar is hyperinflated. It costs too much. I can go get a job, and it's not enough to pay for my, my rent. It's not enough to pay for my, my phone bill or my internet bill. I need two jobs, three jobs. It's actually ridiculous. So the United States of America, like Donald Trump is saying, it needs to be great again. It needs to pray again. It needs to do all these things again. The problem is it's so far gone that I don't know if you're going to get a whole new generation of two, three generations who grew up in this toxic environment. I don't think you're going to get them to just change. You know, 300 million, 400 million Americans are just going to wake up and change and stop, you know, listening to sexual music and drinking and doing all these stupid things and being okay with the LGBTQ XYZs and the he's and the him's and whatever you identify, like all of this stuff is ridiculous and the newer generation has already grown up within it. So like what makes you think you're going to change that or fix that by flaunting a Bible around in their face? It's not going to work. So yes, the message is really, really good. Yes, 100%. The United States of America has gone so far away from Judeo-Christian values. I talk about this so much in my videos. And people go, Muslim countries are oppressive. Muslim countries that I say over and over again, 
No such thing as a Muslim country. No such thing as a Christian country. No such thing as a Jewish country. Israel is not a Jewish nation. Jewish nations do not are not apartheid states. Jewish nations do not commit war crimes. Jewish nations don't bomb people from up from from, from the sky down. Jewish nations don't do the things that they are doing to the people that they're doing it to. Do you understand? The government doesn't speak the way that it speaks and does the things that it does. The, like a Jewish nation doesn't allow n full nude clubs in the middle of the holy city of Jerusalem. You know, like it, it, a Jewish nation isn't make made up of 60% of a population of atheists. So like Israel's not a Jewish nation. America is not a Christian nation. There's nothing that represents Jesus here. Just because you build churches and you put Jesus hanging on a cross does not mean you represent Jesus in any way, shape, or form. That does not represent Jesus. Your actions represent Jesus. Your actions represent what the Bible is, what God has ordained. Your actions as a Christian are what matter. You praying, you fasting, you being a good person, you carrying yourself and conducting yourself correctly and not speaking with an ill tongue, you getting married and not sexualizing yourself and turning yourself into a sex object uh, throughout your teenage years, you going ahead and, you know, um, having a community base where you know people in your community not everyone's so segregated in, in in inside of their device like these are things that people just don't have anymore people don't know what christianity is people don't know what jesus even is or what jesus taught like how do you claim to be christian or a follower of jesus and you do nothing jesus did you don't live any way jesus lived it's so sad and the same goes out to all the muslims as well not following the religion being complete hypocrites adapting to this cultural destruction of have sex with who you want and do whatever drugs you want and kill yourself and be depressed and uh, divorce rate is whatever and like in fornicate and like it's crazy to me the way that the culture has become so demonic so evil you see it in the music you see it in the movies you see it in the games you see it in the entertainment why because people go to entertainment to keep themselves busy so how do you brainwash people through their entertainment if they find dopamine hits in playing a game or dopamine hits in watching a movie or dopamine hits in listening to music they find pleasure in it. So the more and more they keep going to it for that pleasure and you brainwash them with drugs and sex and killing and violence, that's what they're going to adopt. That's what they're going to adapt to. You're going to create a society full of straight tards. So thank you guys so much for coming in today. God bless every single one of you. Uh, Donald Trump won the U.S. elections. I did not vote. I would have had not explained why earlier. Um, and his speech here was really good. Um, he gave a good message, he gave a good speech, but I still think that we are way too far gone. And I think something much more catastrophic would have to happen to reset people, to make people actually understand. Because when we look at the Bible, if you want to bring up the Bible, you want to bring up the religious scriptures, what happened to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened to the people of a lot of these cities. God destroyed these cities, God destroyed these people. He gave them warnings time and time again. These people didn't listen to the warnings, and then he destroyed their nation. The same thing is happening right now. How many more warnings does America need? until our nation is falling apart or destroyed. You know, it doesn't mean a nuke's going to hit us. doesn't mean, you know, a flood's going to hit us or a hurricane's going to hit us. But yes, it could very much mean that. Or it could mean it just collapses from the inside out. It just, the system stops working. We go into a civil war or a revolution or whatever the case may be. But the pace that we're moving at right now is the destruction of America. And America's been here for around 200 years. So we have to be very, very, very careful about how we go forward uh, now in our nation and right now we have a very very big split between older people younger people and the way they completely think because these younger people were raised and brainwashed with the entertainment like we were just talking about to go ahead and believe a completely different way than what Donald Trump is saying right now thank you guys so much for coming today God bless every single one of you and until next time free Palestine free Lebanon free the entire Middle East the entire world from the deception and destruction that these evil 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 demons are causing God bless and bye-bye